Good morning. Welcome to Grove United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Mark Kilborn. 2,000 years ago, Jesus rode into Jerusalem. And as he rode into Jerusalem, he was greeted by a crowd who gathered around the sides of the streets, laying down palm branches, laying down their cloaks, and shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They were there to praise the Lord. And today we are here to praise the Lord. So I invite you to join your hearts in praising our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. to hear John's account of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. It is taken from John chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. 
The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming into Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it just as it was written. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went out to meet him was that they had heard he'd done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, See that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. May God bless the reading of his holy word. I'm in the 30th year of my ministry now. That means I have preached somewhere in the neighborhood of at least 30 Christian holiday sermons. I've preached at least 30 Palm Sunday sermons. I've preached at least 30 Christmas sermons. I've preached at least 30 Easter sermons as well. I can no longer count how many times I've preached about Jesus' birth, his death, his resurrection, and his life. But praise God, those details, that message never changes. But this year, the context is different. This year, with the coronavirus, we see changes in how we celebrate Palm Sunday and Easter. We understand that this year, we will not be able to join together and wave our palm branches together and shout, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Likewise, we will not see the little children grabbing the palm branches and waving them and giggling and running up and down the aisles with them. This Thursday, we will not be able to join together as a community and celebrate an agape meal or even celebrate Holy Communion together. On Friday, I know I will not be able to go on a crosswalk, nor will I be able to gather with my fellow Christians at the feet of the cross. On Easter morning, I know that I will not be able to be with my people for a sunrise service as the sun comes up and reminds us that 2,000 years ago that tomb was found empty. And of course, on Easter Sunday morning, I will not be able to celebrate with my congregation and hear those beautiful Easter hymns raised up, nor will I even be able to see the flowering of the cross. But praise God, all of these activities do not tell us that Easter has been canceled. In fact, the message is still with us. Jesus rose from the dead. He has been glorified and he has conquered death. He has conquered the grave and he lives forevermore. And because he lives, we too can live as well. One of my favorite pastors, Reese Fawcett, said it well this week when he said, Fear and death don't cancel Easter. Easter cancels fear and death. The coronavirus can stop a lot of activities, but it cannot stop us from celebrating Jesus and his resurrection. But it does leave us with a question. And the question is, how do we celebrate Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem? We've already stated that we cannot grab the palm branches as a group and wave them together and shout Hosanna, nor will we be able to see the children running back and forth. We've already stated that the message is still the same. The eternal king has come. He is marching into Jerusalem and he is marching into our lives. The kingdom of God is dawning and the transformation of the world is beginning. This message is still there. We are called to lift our hearts in praise. But maybe this season of the coronavirus calls us to go back and to examine that first Palm Sunday. 
The Gospels are all very clear on the details of that first Palm Sunday. All four recount how that Jesus was on the outside of Jerusalem, beginning to make his way in. Matthew, Mark, Luke, they all recount how that he was moving towards Bethage and the Mount of Olives. And there, as they was coming in, people lined the streets and began to take off their cloaks, laying them before the king as he was coming in, as well as taking palm branches. Jesus had directed his disciples to go and take a donkey and a young colt and bring them so that he could ride them in, so that prophecy would be fulfilled, and so that they would be able to see that here was the king, the king of Israel. The message is very clear. We are called to praise God just like those people of Jerusalem did. To look and see the Savior and the Lord coming into our midst to lift Jesus up. Dare I say, even get excited about the King of Kings. Now throughout Lent, we have paused. We have paused to open our eyes to who we are, to who God is. We have paused so that we could yield to God. We have paused so that we could stretch ourselves beyond our familiarity. And we have paused so that we could respond appropriately to God. Lent is a season in which we confess, we repent, and we even mourn. The coronavirus, of course, has shaken our world right now. And we feel that world shaken. But yet today... Today we come into the presence of God and as we come into his presence, we have this opportunity to see the King of Kings high and lifted up and to worship him and praise him and to remember that no matter what is going on, he is still King. He is still Lord in this time of the coronavirus. All of our idols, all of our distractions have been stripped from us and it's now that we are face to face with God. We're called to praise Him. And we ask, can we still praise Him? And the word is, yes. Yes, we can. But we must make a conscience, conscious decision to do so. This is where the rest of Palm Sunday, the Palm Sunday story comes in. And it is usually not the story that we share on Palm Sunday. Because when we look at it, we see a different statement that is made. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, immediately following the Palm Sunday story, we see a number of stories that come together that we often take apart and don't use as a whole, but it's almost as though they are meant to be as a whole. We see the cursing of the fig tree, the cleansing of the temple, Jesus' authority being challenged, the parable of the tenants, Jesus weeping of Jerusalem, the parable of of the two sons and the parable of the wedding feast. John follows just a little bit of a different way of going about what immediately happens after Palm Sunday. And he tells how that some Greeks came to him. And in the midst of this, he asked them a question. He says, truly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will be my servant also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Immediately following that, John then talks about how Jesus says the Son of Man must be lifted up. And then in a telling statement, the people of Jerusalem all say, Who is this Son of Man? which causes Jesus to launch into this statement about unbelief. And then it closes with Jesus talking about what it means to believe in him. While all these stories are very varied and different and can be preached on in and of themselves, they are all consistent upon this message. Praising Jesus. And welcoming Jesus into Jerusalem is not so much about what we do with our voices. You see, we can easily come and praise God with our lips and yet keep Jesus far away from us with our hands and our lives. We can welcome him into Jerusalem and still keep him at arm's length. 
And one of the greatest signs of this is that within days of the Palm Sunday event, where people were praising God, within days there were people that were ready to kill him. And that they would abandon him and allow him to die upon a cross. Palm Sunday is a challenge to us. A challenge that we are called to not just praise God with our mouths, but to literally praise God with our lives. Our greatest praise comes when we live a life of glorifying Jesus. There is a story that is told about John Wesley when he was about 21 years of all age. And he had just begun Oxford University. And there it was said that he was slightly snobbish and sarcastic. And as he was going about his life, there was a porter there that was very poor. And he only had one coat and didn't really have a lot to be happy about. But yet this particular porter was known for his joy. And John Wesley one day pulled him aside as he was thanking God for his life. And John Wesley said, what else do you have to be thankful for? And this porter said this, I thank him that he has given me my life and my being, a heart to love him and above all, a constant desire to serve him. John Wesley was deeply moved by this response. Later on in his life, as he was dying himself, it was known at that point that his life had been changed and he lived a life of praise. And as he was dying, as his weakness was upon him, he began to sing, I'll praise my maker while I have breath. John Wesley realized that his life was to be that of praising God. He didn't just live in the shadow of the cross. He lived in sight of the throne of God. This is our invitation to Palm Sunday. To come and to praise God. To not just wave the palm branches and shout Hosanna. And to say blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But to make a decision. A decision that our lives will glorify God and lift Him high. That people will be able to see day in and day out that our lives are a testimony to how good God is. Of course, this Lent and this Easter is unique for us. I doubt we will ever see this again in our lifetime. And most of us will be thankful for that. Throughout Lent, we have come to that place toward that we have examined our lives and we have confessed and we have repented. But now we come and we see how that the coronavirus is transforming our lives. Too many are caught up with what is going on around us, but our distractions have been stripped away. The distractions of our jobs, our success, our motivations, our social entertainments, our interactions. We have been left bare and vulnerable, but our eyes have been open to the reality. God has been all that we have ever needed. And God is still on the throne. And Jesus is calling out for our praise. For us to see this risen Savior marching into Jerusalem and into our hearts. And we are called to make this decision to praise Him and to worship Him. So I invite you today in this Palm Sunday to make a conscious decision to lift His name up and to worship Him in your life. Amen.
that of course was not quite as wide. And we heard a crowd of people shouting, and so we stopped to find out why. There was that man that my dad said he loved, but today there was fear in his eyes. So I said, Daddy, why are they screaming? Why are the faces of some of them beaming? Why is he dressed in that bright purple robe? I bet that crown hurts him more than he shows. Daddy, please, can't you do something? He looks as though he's gonna cry. You said he was stronger than all of those guys. Daddy, please tell me why. Why does everyone want him to die? Later that day, the sky grew cloudy. And Daddy said I should go. Somehow he knew things would get stormy. Boy, was he right. But I could not keep from wondering if there was something he had to hide. So after he left, I had to find out. I was not afraid of getting lost. And I followed the crowd to a hill where I knew men had been killed. And I heard a voice come from the cross. And it said, Father, why are they screaming? Why are the faces of some of them beaming? Why are they casting their lots for my robe? This crown of thorns hurts me more than it shows. Father, please, can't you do something? I know that you must hear my cry. I thought I could handle a cross of this size. Father, remind me why, why does everyone want me to die? Oh, when will I understand why? My precious son, I hear them screaming, and I'm watching the face of the enemy beaming. But soon I will clothe you in robes of my own. Jesus, this hurts me much more than you know. But this dark hour, I must do nothing. Though I've heard your unbearable cry. in your blood destroys all of the lies. Soon you'll see past 
their unmerciful eyes. Look there below, see the child trembling by his father's side. Now I can tell you why. He is why you must die.